Good morning, afternoon, or evening, all of my outdoor adventurous friends. This is The Outdoor Gypsy, where I try and bring you the highest quality content that I can in as little of time as possible on day hikes and backpacking all across the United States and North America. If you enjoy this video, go ahead, trample all over that like button down below. Consider subscribing and drop me a line if you have any questions. Stay tuned all the way till the very end of the video where I will be sharing my thoughts, tips, tricks, things you may want to know before you go on this hike. Without further ado, my girlfriend and I are going to be hiking in the beautiful Henry Coe State Park here in California.
All right, Hanny, day two. Ready for it? Ready, let's do it. Boom.
<laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. As you can see here on my Coros app, as well as my All Trails app, this hike went a total of 40 to 40 and a half miles with an elevation gain of approximately 6,900 feet to 8,500 feet, depending on which app you are using. I tend to believe my Koros watch is a little bit more accurate, so I do believe it's closer to the 8,500 feet in elevation gain, rather than the 6,900 feet of elevation gain reported on my All Trails app. This hike is moderately difficult. That very much depends on what kind of shape and condition you are in. We did this in mid-February over the course of three days and two nights with the first night camp being spent at Mississippi Lake and our second night being spent at Coit Lake. All right, how do you get to the trailhead? Where is the Park HQ? Take 101 either north or south, depending on where you are coming from. Take the exit East Dunn Avenue. Once you're on this road, the road pretty much will take you and end right at the Park HQ and that's also where the trailhead will start for this hike. Once you're in the parking lot, go ahead, grab all your gear, head over to the ranger station and speak with the rangers themselves on getting your backcountry permits. In Henry Co, the permitting system is a little bit different than the more modern day go online and reserve your spots and then hit the ground running. Henry Co is a first come first serve basis and they have different backcountry zones is what they are called. Once the zones get filled up, then they have met their quota. You cannot then camp in that backcountry zone and the rangers will also let you know this. My general perception is unless you're doing this on a very busy peak weekend or a holiday weekend in the summer, you probably are going to be able to get the, the backcountry zone that you want pretty easily. But again, that's just my perception. I'm kind of happy with the Henry Co that you are forced to go talk with the rangers to get your backpacking permits because a lot of times you're able to just go online now, get your permits, and you can just bypass the rangers and just start your trip. I found it actually quite humbling and very helpful talking with the rangers because I forgot just how much information that they do have on the park since they are there every day. They gave us some very valuable information as far as some specific backcountry spots to camp in when we were hiking, as well as different wild animals and even wildflowers that were quite rare to keep an eye on in very specific sections of the trail. So talk with them, see what's new in the trail, and what's kind of currently going on dynamically within the park. I think it might be very helpful. Like most places in California, the amount of wildflowers here in Henry Co is nothing short of spectacular. Keep in mind that depending on the time of the year you go and do this hike, your experience here with the wildflowers will differ quite drastically. My girlfriend and I did this again in mid-February and the amount as well as the diversity of wildflowers was absolutely astounding. Some of the wildflowers that we were able to see on this trip were the lowland shooting star and in some areas in huge patches and these are personally my favorite wildflower in California. The highland shooting star, gray mule ears, purple owl clover, blue witch, hound's tongue, Chinese houses, Indian paintbrush, lupine, scarlet pimpernel, and baby blue eyes. And there were some others that we did see here on this trip. It was just these are the ones we took some photos of. Keep your eyes open for some of the wild animals of the park that are more frequent than others, that being black-tailed deer, black-tailed jackrabbit, coyote, as well as bobcat. Some of the birds that we had seen on this trip were the red-winged blackbird, the red-tailed hawk, as well as the very boisterous and full of character American coot. And this little bird definitely kept me up later at night, especially at Mississippi Lake. They're noisy little buggers. All right, just some general things to know. I didn't really think there were any bugs here. Maybe you'll encounter a few, but it's pretty limited. You are gonna be hiking exposed on this trip like 90% of the time. So plan accordingly for that. The sun will be beating down on you. 
That leads me into what is the best time of year to go and do this trip. I personally think fall, winter, or spring where the cloud cover is a little bit more noticeable. You might get some rain here and there. And again, it's just better to hike when it's not 100 degrees in the middle of the day in this park. As far as the backcountry sites are concerned for, for camping at Mississippi Lake and Quiet Lake, I found there to be about six to seven, maybe eight good sites overall at both lakes. My girlfriend and I decided to put up a camp on the north end of Mississippi Lake. And there are pit toilets both in the north and the south end, which is a nice little convenience. Hopefully you can gain some perspective on where we were camping based on the video. At Coit Lake, there were a lot more people with us versus Mississippi Lake. Mississippi, we pretty much had the entire lake to ourselves. There was nobody around. Coit Lake seems to be a little bit more popular and there were about 10 to 15 other people camping with us at Coit Lake. Again, there are also two different pit toilets, I believe, at Coit Lake. And again, just a nice overall convenience. Some of the highlights for me personally on this trip were hiking through the Narrows. One of the reasons for that was seeing the California Newts. Despite these guys being really cute, do not touch them. They do secrete a little bit of a toxin that can cause some irritation to your hands if they feel threatened. So just admire them, but don't touch them. You will also be able to see a handful of turtles in this section that will either be crossing or sometimes even on the trail. Same with the newts. Um, the other thing in Henry Co that I loved, like most places here in California, again, are the wildflowers. At this time of year, they were just everywhere, especially the highland and lowland shooting star. So keep your eyes open for those. And lastly would be when we were hiking up and then eventually descending down towards Coit Lake, when we looked to the east, you could actually see the white caps of the Sierras. It was clear enough of a day that you could see that far. Henry Co offers a, a ton, a, just an absolute ton of views for miles and miles in many different directions, at least with this trail. Five out of five stars. I cannot recommend this park enough. Just absolutely astounding for many different reasons. But yep, pick up the gear, go do it. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I am the Outdoor Gypsy. I'm signing off for now, but I will see you guys on the next adventure. Get some nature love.